Welcome back to DDL's Pack Review Series. My name is Scott Levy. Today we're going to talk about diet penetration leak testing ASTM F1929. We're joined here today with Pete Johnson. Welcome Pete. Thanks sir. Pete's got 10 to 12 years experience in the medical device package testing industry. Pete, tell me a little bit about diet penetration. What's, why utilize it? Diet penetration is a quick and effective way to uh, test the integrity of your seal. Um, uh, very commonly, it's used in uh, sealer process validations uh, to to evaluate the integrity, you know, of your seal. It's a, it's a great great test to do that. Tell me a little bit more why I mean, the main benefit of using this procedure over, let's say, bubble leak testing or any of the other physical integrity test methods that are out there. Well, it, it, it's a more sensitive test to test the integrity of your seal. It's it's got a sensitivity to test um, to evaluate channels down to two thousand seven inch. Um, so it is more uh, sensitive than a bubble leak type test. And if you're really concentrating on evaluating your seal areas, this would be the test to go with. Sounds good. Tell me a little bit more. I mean, uh, I hear a lot of customers using bubble leak testing. Why would you use dial leak instead of bubble leak and vice versa? Well, bubble leak is a, is a whole package test. So um, for, for many of your uh, package validations, that would probably be the test to go with. Um, Sealer process validations, again, that's a common uh, approach uh, for using this test, is it to evaluate specifically on that seal area. Now, the, the test method itself uh, only concentrates on the seal. So the rest of that package would go unevaluated. So the uh, faces of the materials or the substrates of the materials, uh, those wouldn't necessarily be tested by using this method. Um, keep in mind that this method is also meant for non-opaque materials, meaning clear material with one side being clear and the other side being of a wicking type material like Tyvek or paper. I'm glad you brought that up. Tell me some of the pitfalls. Uh, if you're executing dye penetration, I'd say on a poly Tyvek package or a poly paper package, what are some of the pitfalls if you're not careful? Well, you would really want to um, not over test the area, I guess is a good way of putting it. Um, leaving the dye solution uh, along that seal for an extended period of time, you can start getting some false positives. You know, with, with wicking material, the dye solution tends to bleed through if it's, if it's left um, in the area uh, for an extended period of time. Um, the standard itself calls, uh, calls out for testing to be performed within about 20 seconds. So on an average package, that'd be about five seconds per seal. I think I see that quite frequently myself. I'll get uh, phone calls very frequently that we have a big problem with our tray and that we're failing the dive penetration and then understanding that they're holding, uh, first of all, the test method validation has been done. The personnel haven't been quite trained properly per the standard itself and what they'll do is they'll end up holding it up for, could be 10 to 15 seconds. And that dive solution will starts to come through and it looks like a failure, but it's not a failure. Exactly. It's just the straight wicking of it. And I think that's something that uh, should be really highlighted here, that if you leave that solution in too long, you'll get what you'll call a false positive. When, di when you're executing dye penetration, usually if there's a channel void or hole, it's an instantaneous scenario. That dye comes shooting out immediately. Is that your experience right. as well? Yep, yeah. yeah. that's, that's what we see. And um, another scenario is uh, with uh, separation of materials or delamination of materials, that dye solution will find that uh, fairly quickly and it might look like a failure when, when actually it's not. So depending on, on what, what, um, which step of the process you're in and, and what, um, what type of samples you have, you know, this, this could be a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, per the procedure, it's got, or the methodology, I should say, has three different uh, options to utilize. I'm going to call them procedures, but essentially they are procedures. You know, three, right. there's three separate ones. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Um, there's, like you mentioned, there's three techniques um, per the procedure. Um, one being technique A. Yep. That's where you will, that's called the injection method, where you put the dye solution inside the package and you're going to use gravity to review the seal of that package area um, and check for any channels that may present themselves. Um, technique B is the edge dip method where you would physically dip the edge of the seal in the dye solution in a you know, bath of, of dye solution and look for a channel wicking upwards. Now the key point with that 
technique is the edge of the seal has to be at the edge of the package. So if you have excess material, you have to remove that material prior to doing that procedure. Um, technique C is for that case um, that I just mentioned. If you have extended material beyond the seal, you can use technique C, which is uh, basically placing a bead, separating those two materials, and placing a bead in between those materials and looking uh, for any channels that may present themselves. Which procedure primarily do most of your clients ask for? Um, the most common procedure I see you use is technique A, which would be the injection method, putting the dye solution inside. Yeah, for my, my, for my customers and clients, yeah, pretty much the same holds true. Uh, when dealing with the overall procedure, are there any specifics? Can anybody really run this? Uh, that's a great question. Um, not exactly. Um, one, you need, to, you need to really have your test method validated. Um, two, being the standard is specific to the formula that you need to use. Um, and obviously having those, making sure that you can produce the right formula. The, the test methodology is, is probably the key piece. You know, making sure you can identify channels, making sure that there's no um, variability between um, your procedures, who's doing the test. Um, anything along those lines. That sounds good. I well, appreciate your time today, Pete. Thanks. Sir. If you'd like to learn anything more about the Pack Review Series or DDL in general, uh, please visit our website at www.testedandproven.com.